It has been an interesting couple of days. So as I'm sure you're aware, there was the Latam airline strikes, which meant half of our group couldn't get here, we couldn't start the workshop. Well, they have finally all arrived, and I've spent the last two days, or the last day, getting to know each and every one of them, what they expect from this workshop, where they are with their photography, and just generally just, just, just hanging out. And it seems that each and every one of them is a, an accomplished photographer, so there are no issues there. So our first shoot together was in Punta Arenas, and it wasn't, it, it was kind of like a spontaneous sunrise shoot. We went down to the beach, which was just around the corner from our hotel, and conditions were just superb. The light was phenomenal. We didn't have much to work with. There was this old jetty running out into the sea, but it was a great opportunity to see what the group could do and, and see if we could all work together and not get in each other's way. Um, and it was fantastic. And that was our very first shoot together and the light was just epic. And I don't like to use the word epic, but it was truly epic. From Punta Arenas we drove to Puerto Natales and we had a sunset shoot. Now again, I don't think Puerto Natales is a landscape photography location. I don't think it offers a great deal um, and it certainly isn't quintessential. You know, it's not, it's not what you would associate with Patagonia. Patagonia you associate, you associate huge mountains, glaciers, rivers and all of that good stuff and that is all to come but we were just warming up so we went out for this sunset shoot again it was like across the road from our hotel this old dilapidated wooden pier that goes out into the distance you've got mountains in the background um, now I would say that that location was a struggle because there was a group of a large group of us plus a good handful of local photographers so it seems that that was the one and only spot in Porto Natalis where you could shoot because everyone was there but we had very, very interesting conditions. Um, and I'll admit, I, I found it a struggle, um, purely because of the, the space issues, but we broke out the long lens and I played around with some long exposures and managed to come away with an image I'm happy with. And more importantly than that, it seems that all of the group got an image they were happy with. So this is still practice, this is still kind of like, I don't really consider these proper photo shoots, if that makes sense, I know it is, but you know, what we want is the proper National Park, National Park epic stuff. So that night we went and we had dinner and it was fantastic, still getting to know everybody and, and, and the whole group seems like top people and, and very talented photographers as well. I don't think anyone struggles technically. Um, so yeah, a great group. The next morning, uh, this morning, we decided to go and shoot the jetty again. Why not, right? But it was chucking it down. It was raining. It was windy. It was actually snowing at one point, but not the good snow, the very heavy, wet snow. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, this explosion of light and color just happened. The whole scene came to life. The sky glowed this beautiful pink orange color that reflected in the water and everybody persevered. And what was so special about this morning, what was so special about that moment is it wasn't a lesson in landscape photography. You know, it wasn't like composition works like this, put your filter in here, focus there, none of that. The lesson this morning was just, you've got to be in it to win it. 
I know it's raining, I know it's cold, but you're here, right? Just see what happens. It was a lesson in patience and perseverance and everyone was rewarded. And that happens so often in landscape photography. You get terrible conditions. And then how many, how many people watching this? Okay, comment below, I don't know. How many people have watched this video have gone to a location, gone on a shoot, it's been cloudy, it's been raining, so you've packed up and you've left only to find that when you get to the car or halfway down the trail or wherever, that all of a sudden the light comes and yeah, it's a very common thing, it's happened to me many times. Um, so it's really important that you wait it out just to see what happens and that's what we got this morning. So. It was, it was perfect. Um, I personally, I don't think I got a great image because I'm so busy working with the group to make sure they're all happy and doing well. Um, my images are never a priority on a workshop. Um, it's always make sure everybody's happy first, then I'll break out the camera and take a couple myself. And the same goes for video, which is why I'm recording this now. Um, I'm not vlogging. Um, not yet anyway, I will vlog when I get more comfortable with the group and when I know that everybody's cool and okay with that. But what I should say is because my attention is, well both mine and Brendan's attention is focused very much on the group, um, we have somebody else, we have Greg, who is like, he's super, super talented filmmaker. So he's kind of documenting the whole trip, which is why this video is full of super slick, sexy B-roll. I mean, have you, have you seen me here? Look at me here, putting my bag over my shoulder and walking off. You know, I can't shoot that by myself. Um, so Greg's doing all of that awesome B-roll. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share Greg's channel here. Um, go and check him out, watch his videos. He's super talented and he's also recording his own vlogs or videos of this trip, so you may be interested in that, I don't know. But also, he's more than a filmmaker. He, he is like a thesaurus for Patagonia. He used to work down here as a guide, and he's, he's worked, I think he worked here for a fair few years. He knows the area inside and out. He's helped with booking hotels, transport. Um, he speaks fluent Spanish. He knows the area. He knows so much local knowledge about everything. And he's like, he goes into full on tour guide mode, and it's superb. Um, so having him on board has been the biggest asset. So me and Brendan can focus on photography with the group. We don't need to worry about filming and we don't need to worry too much about logistics. Um, so yeah, so these videos that you're going to see, and I know I'm waffling, I know I'm waffling, but these videos that you're going to see, uh, they're going to be different to my usual stuff because we have Greg. Um, and it's nice. I've got to admit, it's nice. <laughs> I don't, don't have to worry about putting my camera down and I've got to walk past the camera and now put my thing on my tripod and film it. I don't have to do any of that. Obviously, I'll film a bit and if I'm comfortable with the group, I'll do some, you know, some selfie stuff. But um, yeah, I just wanted to share with you the past day. And I still would like to emphasize <laughs> that we are not yet in the real Patagonia. Not yet. Soon. Soon we will be in land of the giants. So yeah, very much looking forward to it. So yeah, this video, I, I don't know, it's a bit different than usual, um, but that's because my attention is elsewhere, but stick with it and follow me on this superb journey. Cool, so once again, thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye for now.